Hello Abelim Pushers! If you have seen my last video how to use the push 1 and push 2 with the Cocos Reba application, I think you will be more than curious now how I did that and how you can use it. So I will guide you a little bit through the installation process and tell you a little bit about the background, how it's working and how this is even possible. So to get the software, you just go to my website, mossgrabbers.de and there you can click on music software and then there is up here the controller scripts for Cocos Reaper. Go here and there you can download the software. When you download the zip file, you just uh, double click it and it contains a folder and you can put that folder anywhere you like on your hard disk I put it myself under Programme, which is German for programs, and there I copied the folder into. When you have done so, here is a readme file, which gives you again all the installation instructions. Also some limitations, what is not working with Reaper, you can read that up there. And uh, there is also the manual included into that file. Here you see what's happening. This looks pretty complicated and I really had to jump through some loops to keep that going. Up there you see uh, we have Reaper and I have installed the SVS extension for Reaper, which you might be familiar with. So the main communication with the Transformator uh, application is uh, we use OSC. So OSC is a public protocol, which is also implemented by Reaper. This uh, communicates via UDP with the Transformator application. The protocol is pretty limited. Basically, it tells you about what tracks are available, what their names is, their volumes, panorama, and and these things. If you want to go beyond that, you're pretty lost. So what I did here is I tried to write uh, my own commands for it and Rear Script, which is one programming interface available in Reaper, is pretty powerful by now. But the problem so far was uh, you could only run it as one command in a project, but not for the whole application. So this is what SVS extension now allows you. You can select an action command, a script which runs the whole time. So that's how how I uh, put in there my own implementation. This communicates via TCP as well with Transformator. And the application on the other side talks to push one and two. Most of the stuff is done by MIDI and for the push two for to run the display, you also need the USB. And also this application allows you to configure all those different protocols, but normally everything is set and should work out of the box. This was just to give an understanding what's happening in the background. Normally when it's everything set up, just forget about it. So let's start with the configuration. First thing we need to do is we start Reaper and we need to configure the OC part. To do that, just uh, open up the preferences. And if you scroll down in the preferences, there's a section control surface there, click on add and then choose here uh, the open sound control, the OC protocol. I already did that and I have here that one. And in the dialog here, you need to enter a name. So just call that push. And here we need to select a file. So if you open that drop down list, click on open config directory, and then you will get the folder where uh, those protocol files are stored. And from your download, going back to that one, you need to copy the transformator reaper oc file into that oc folder of reaper so i already did that as well so i have it in here so we can close that one here down and uh, then you end up again here you need to click on refresh list so you get the new list and then you can select transformator check that that one is enabled so we have the one part uh, we're talking to is, is on 8000 this should be everything set out of the box and sending to 9000 on the local host part so i think these are the default settings so no need to change anything here just say okay and that's it. And another thing you need to check, our application is directly talking via MIDI to the push controller. So there's no need uh, to have it enabled here. Actually also need to disable it. So make sure that all your able to push MIDI devices are completely disabled. So that one, and there's another one, that one also make sure that is disabled and the same for the outputs. That one is disabled and another one that one is also disabled. So everything's fine here. 
we can click on OK. Next thing is you need to make sure that you have to install the SVS extension. So if you don't have that already, you just need to enter here SVS Reaper or something and you will come to that page SVS SNM extension, download it for your operating system, for Windows or for OS X and install it. After you have installed it, just restart the Reaper. What we now do is we configure the extensions which talk via Rescript to Reaper. And to do so, now you should see this new menu here. So the first thing you need to do is go to the actions and show the action list. And when the action list is upcoming, click on load. And now again, navigate to your installation folder. So I put it here into programs and there is a transformator folder and there is a script called tcpserver.eel and then after you have selected that click on open after that you should find that entry here in the list and if your list is very long and you cannot spot it you can here say script and then it will filter it and so it's easier to spot and what we now need to do is we need to tell the SVS extension that this script should be run all the time. So to do so, you right click here and you say copy selected action command. We do that and then we can close the dialog. And now we go to this extension menu and there we locate the startup actions and there is set global startup action. Okay. I already have assigned it, so it asks me if I want to replace it. I say yes. And there I can enter command ID. So I click here and say uh, paste. And then I have it in OK. And it said OK. It's set as a global action. The last thing we need to do is uh, the transformator application itself is programmed in, in Java. If you don't have Java installed on your computer, uh, you just need to download the JDK. Don't get the simple JDK, get the JDK because it's easier. You get directly here to the download page and you should grab the latest uh, available version. What is that here again? Yes, whatever. And the latest version is currently that one. Um, you say accept license and then you download it either for Windows, choose a 64-bit version or the 64-bit Mac version. It should actually also run with 32-bit, also 32-bit Reaper, but I only tested with 64-bit. On Mac, it's already possible to start Java. On Windows, you need to make sure that you have the Java home environment variable set. To do so, press the Windows key and the pause key, and you can directly jump to your to your settings there you can say uh what is it in english uh, additional system settings go there to environment variables down here and if this variable is not already set create a new one this is new give it a name java underscore home and enter the folder where you have installed it you can make sure that it's working if you just open a console. On Mac, you should just be able to type Java. Uh, on Windows, it's not found. So here we check this Java home. Ba -bam. Bam. Java. No. Ah, it's in bin. Do it like this and then it should be give you that option so you know it's it's installed and everything is working fine after that you simply go to the folder where you have installed it and there are already some batch files for you so for windows you can start these two ones so if you have the push one you run that one if you have the push two you run that one for mac you can use that one and that one 
So now I have my push 2 connected so I can start that one and it is starting up the transformator application. And as I said, everything should be set now out of the box and also Reaper gets started automatically. So you only have to start one software and not two programs. If I go back to that one, you see um, there are several features here. The upper part is for the communication part. So here you need to make sure that your MIDI input and output to the push controller is correctly selected. Normally this should be guessed correctly. If not, you have here the option to check it. Also the communication ports with Reaper should be correct, 8000 and 9000. If in any case on your computer these ports are, are used by other applications, you have here the option to choose them to a different ones, but you also need to change them in Reaper then and click on apply. Um, this part gives you a preview of, of, of the display and of the push to. So this is for push to now. So if I, for example, create a track here, you will also see this track here. So you get here a nice preview of the track. You can also turn it off if you don't want to have it. On the lower part, there's more stuff. Uh, here is a path to the Reaper application for the automatic start. So this is set to the default path. In any case, you have uh, installed it to a different one. You have here the option to choose another executable, another part, and also uh, start it again with run command. And that checkbox say run automatically. So if that is enabled, the application is automatically started when you start that application as well. Below that here you get a log file. So in any case, something goes wrong, it will be locked in that part here. And that one uh, signals you if the extension part of the Reaper extension I program is working in Reaper. If this box is not checked, there's a problem there. And it's also everything is reconnecting automatically if it breaks down. Um, that part allows you to adjust the colors of, of the display to your liking. So for example, you can change the background color here. You can adjust the, the fonts you use, fader colors. So to whatever you like. And if you think that's crap what you did, just click on reset and it will be back to the default values. Yeah, I think that's basically what you can do here. Let's close it down. And the same thing is for push one with much less uh, options here. I don't have currently the, the push one connected. That's why the MIDI input and outputs are not found, but uh, they should be connected here, uh, selected here also automatically and the ports and you get the, the, the lock screen and the TCP, but all the other parameters which are necessary for the display are not in that application. I just noticed that I forgot to have the start path in here. So I think I need to update that. But nevertheless, it should be started automatically. Okay, so I hope this uh, short video will help you start going and keep it running. And I hope you enjoy it. Bye.